ارزونا 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 وسيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن إلا وأنتم مسلمون يا أيها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحدة وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والأرحام إن الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم أعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما أما بعد فإن أصدق الحديث كلام الله وخير الهدي هدي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الأمور محدثاتها وكل محدثة بدعة وكل بدعة ضلالة وكل ضلالة في النار ثم أما بعد عباد الله هل علمتم عباد الله أهمية هذه الكلمات التي كان يرددها رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم كلما خطب الناس وكلما حشر له الناس ليعظهم تلكم الكلمات وإن كل محدثة بدعة وكل بدعة ضلالة وكل ضلالة في النار Respected brothers and sisters in Islam We commence by praising Almighty Sending salutations and prayers upon the seal of all prophets and messengers Muhammad Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam I commence this khutbah with a question And I ask Do you know the reality of these words That the prophet peace of almighty be upon him Always opens his khutbah and his lectures with He never mounted a member Without these words He rarely addressed them without these words But why did he used to repeat them each and every khutbah And whenever the companions are gathered in front of him He never changed those words And he was the most eloquent human being on earth And he used to teach his disciples And teach the companions those words like he used to teach them Quran The same way he taught them Quran The same way he taught them those words And he did not leave this earth Without repeating those words Enough for the companions to memorize And to hear them every Jumu'ah But because they are so repeated And often repeated We pay no minds to them And what we expect from the Khatib Is what comes after those two words So those words are not now just like part of our bodies that we do not appreciate until we fall ill then we begin to pay mind to them those words are wa inna kull muhdathatin bid'ah wa kull bid'atin dalalah wa kull dalalatin fi an-nar 
This is the first word, and I believe you know them and you memorize them. The other words, dear brothers and sisters in Islam, and Imam Abu Bakr al-Bayhaqi in his book, Shu'ab al-Iman, reporting from Anas ibn Malik, who said, قلما خطبنا رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم إلا قال لا إيمان لمن لا أمانة له ولا دين لمن لا عهد له لا إيمان لمن لا أمانة له ولا دين لمن لا عهد له Have you heard this word before? Do you have it in your system? Have you memorized it? And how many times have you learned it? And how many times have you passed it on? And how many times have you repeated it to your own children, in your own school system, in your own homes, in your own organizations, and in your own conferences? And Nabi, alayhi salatu wasalam, your prophet and mine, he never concluded a khutbah. Anas ibn Malik said, rarely will he address us without this word. Words. لا إيمان لمن لا أمانة له ولا دين لمن لا عهد له and because of the repetition of these two words وإن كل محدثة بدعة وكل بدعة ضلالة وكل ضلالة في النار the first word so let's begin with the first وإن كل محدثة بدعة the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم said and every newly invented matter in this religion is an innovation. وَإِنَّ كُلَّ بِدْعَةٍ ضَلَالَةٍ And that every innovation is nothing but misguidance. وَكُلَّ ضَلَالَةٍ فِي النَّارِ And every misguidance will end in hellfire. I repeat, وَإِنَّ كُلَّ مُحْدَثَةٍ بِدْعَةٍ Verily, every newly invented matter in this religion is an innovation. And every innovation is misguidance. And every misguidance will end in hellfire. Dear brother and dear sister in Islam, this should be in your heart every Jumu'ah. Just in case you do not hear it from Al-Khatib, repeat it to yourself. Because were our Prophet to mount this member today, were he to be alive, you would have heard those words. Were he to be in our midst, he would have repeated them. And since this manabir, and since those prophets that khutaba are mounting every Jumu'ah, do not belong to us, rather belong to him. And whoever stands up on a member, he is a representative of that person, that prophet, and that messenger of Allah. You have to remind people what he would have reminded them were he to be on this member today. Verily, every newly invented matter is misguidance. And every misguidance is in hellfire. كل محدثة بدعة وكل بدعة ضلالة وكل ضلالة في النار. And do not be bewildered or do not be deceived or do not be fooled by someone with his or her eloquence in Arabic language to tell you that we have bid'atun hasana and that we have bid'atun sayyi'ah. We have a good bid'ah, a good innovation and a bad innovation. And they cite the statement of Umar ibn al-Khattab radiyallahu anhu when he said to the companions when he saw them praying in salat al-tarawih after the death of the prophet ni'matul bid'atu hadhi this is an excellent bid'ah fasta'mala lafza al-bid'ah isti'mala al-lughawiyan wa laysa isti'mala shari'ya so Umar ibn al-Khattab utilized that word al-bid'ah linguistically not the technical definition of it Linguistically, when you say ni'mah of something, mean how excellent that is. So he did use that terminology linguistically, not technically, to bring something new into al-Islam. Some people will still continue to argue that no, it was not used linguistically. Umar used it technically, so it's part of al-Islam to have ni'matul bid'ah to have So we say salih. For the sake of argument, we agree with you that because he used that is part of the technical definition, not the linguistic. So if he used it, he has the permissibility to do that. Why? Because he was Khalifa to Rashid. He was a guided Khalifa. And the Prophet told us, learn from the Khulafa al-Rashidin al-Mahdiyin min ba'di. 
take from the teachings of Khulafa after me. Umar was Khalifa to Khalifa to Rasulullah. So he was Khalifa to Rashid, a guided Khalifa. So for the sake of argument, if we said he had used that technically and not linguistically, he has the right that came from the Prophet. But I don't have that right. I'm not Khalifa to Rashid. Your Imam is not Khalifa to Rashid. My Shaykh is not Khalifa to Rashid. My Imam is not Khalifa to Rashid, but Umar was. So if he used that, that is in his own right. I'm citing this to say, now that we are living, three days from now, we will have what is called Christmas or Xmas. Now we have been practicing bid'ah until it is common among us that as a Muslim, you can wish and now believe a Merry Christmas and use it استعمال اللغوية like Umar just so that you can build the love between you and the Christians and this bid'ah or this shirk is the worst and worse and ever worse holiday of the non-believers. There is no holiday on this earth that is worse than Christmas. There is no holiday or celebration that is worse than wishing someone a Merry Christmas. Lima, why? Because in it, there is ascribing partners with Allah that you are ascribing that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has taken for himself a child or a son. لقد جئتم شيئا إدا تكاد السماوات يتفطرن منه وتنشق الأرض وتخر الجبال هدا أن دعوا للرحمن ولدا Almighty Allah said that the heavens are about to cleft asunder and that the mountains are about to split into pieces and this earth is about to open as well simply because they claim that almighty Allah has taken for himself a son so wishing someone that Christmas is like ascribing to this and a person might say well it's based on my intention that I'm wishing or if I don't do that they will look at me as a bad citizen or a bad neighbor dear brother and sister in Islam as a Muslim your priority is your Lord Jalla Jalalu and just in case you want to be that good citizen in January before December arrive let your neighbors know that I love you being my neighbor but we have certain holidays that we don't practice one of them is Christmas when it gets there I do not wish anyone and I do not respond because in it I'm ascribing partner to my creator Jalla Jalalu Ibadallah sometimes we will be asking dear Imam is it allowed to wish someone Merry Christmas can we celebrate Halloween can we celebrate Thanksgiving and the question Questions often come to the Aimma asking, well, you and I know that Criflo Dollar, who is one of the predominant priests of America, and that T.D. Jakes, one of the leading authority in Christianity in America in Dallas, and that Joe Osteen and the leading authorities of Christianity and Judaism, they have never been asked as Christians, can we celebrate Eid al-Adha with Muslims? Can we celebrate Ramadan with Muslims? They never ask that because it's not in alignment with what they do. So it's acceptance of inferiority when you begin to acknowledge someone's holiday when he acknowledges yours not. When he does not know even yours exists. So Abdullah Almighty Allah had given you this deen Everything that you do, remember the prophet repeats every Jumu'ah, every newly invented matter is an innovation. And every innovation is misguidance and every misguidance is in hellfire. My young brother that is to that corner using a phone, this is Jumu'ah. When we come here, we come in to get some prescription. We come in here to get some medicine and it's only 30 minutes medicine. So this 30 minutes is the best you get out of the week. No day in our weeks like Jumu'ah. And there's no precious time like during the time of Khutbah. So young man, don't waste that time in the phone. Afterwards, you can do that. I'm saying this not to put you on the spot, but I love you. That's why I don't want you to lose the blessing of Jumu'ah so that you go out with the blessing. So put that in your pocket, and after Jumu'ah, you can take care of it and play however you want, but not during the Jumu'ah. 
and may Allah bless you, young man, and I hope this will last with you for the rest of your life. Dear brothers and sisters in Islam, these are the words of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Every newly invented matter in is an innovation. Whatever that you do, you ask yourself, is this part of a deen? If yes, you go. If not, you pause. And part of the innovation that we ascribe to ourselves and begin to practice to think that our religion is only about being religiously endowed. When it comes to being so Socially connected, it's not part of the deen. That's for kuffar. When it comes to the world of politics, leave it for the for the kuffar. That's for their world, or that's what they are endowed with. And this part of world, we only care about being religious. We only care about being pious. We only care about al Islam, and we do not care about the world of politics. That concept. It's another ibtida on fidin Allah. It's another innovation that get into us. This deen is not only about being religious and that's it. It's not only about being pious within. It's about caring for yourself, caring for your brother, caring for your community, caring for your society, and caring for your nation. If you back off only in the masjid, it's what you care about yourself. Connect to the masjid and your society, you are disconnected. Socially, you are disconnected. Politically, you don't know what's going on. That's when you will have the LG who just got here, who just got some power, a few years in America, now they're the one controlling the curricular of high school and middle school and public schools. Why? Because we left the forum and the platform thinking that that's not part of our responsibility. That concept in itself is another bid'ah in our deen that an Nabi alayhi salatu wasalam never practiced. So Abdullah, we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wa ta'ala to make us of those who care much about a deen. Uh, dear brothers, they said, if you don't mind to pull up front. So we have some places for our brothers who are standing. So if you don't mind just to come up and fill up the front side for our brothers. Barakallahu feekum. إذا قيل لكم تفسحوا في المجلس فافسحوا يفسح الله لكم. When it is said to you to make room for your brothers, Allah said, do it. Allah will open paths and ways for you. And I pray that Almighty Allah paves the way and open ways for you in your lives. Dear brothers, this is the first portion of what the Prophet Ali salatu wasalam used to do. So to conclude the first section of what the Prophet used to repeat every Jumu'ah, this deen is not only about self. This deen is not only about ourselves, about I, about me, about mine, about ours, about only us. The deen is about you, it's about me, it's about us, it's about them, it's about our community, it's about our society, and it's about our country. Just 14 hours or 18 hours ago, your governor, the governor of Ohio, was asked concerning the right of the children in practicing what is known to be part of the LGBT community's right. Children, not adults. Children, what will be their own rights? And the governor, Mike DeWine, he went on answering that. What he will say will have more leverage than what every imam will say, no matter how you repeated that. Because in that part of the world, we disassociated ourselves. So what is said in that world is the law. What you say here is just a teaching. Whoever wants to follow, follows. But Islam is all about laws of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Just like we have our constitution, the U.S. Constitution, Islam of Allah is a universal constitution that everybody is part of. So dear brother and dear sister in Islam, know that part of your deen is to care about thyself. Care about your community, care about your society, and care about your country, and care about what your what your responsibilities are socially, what your 
responsibilities are religiously and what your responsibilities are politically. This is this side. Now the other part, because we're running out of time, that the prophet will repeat every Jumu'ah, that whenever he stands before his companions, he repeats, He is not a believer. He is not a complete believer. Whosoever has no trust, Whosoever is not trustworthy. Allah wa barakallahu feek. May Allah reward you. So dear brothers and sisters in Islam, the Prophet said, Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, La imana liman la amanata lah. He is not a true believer. Whosoever is not trustworthy. If you are not trustworthy, you will never attain the highest level of iman. Wala deena liman la ahda lah. And the Prophet said, he or she is not religious. Whosoever has no covenant. Whoever does not keep his promise. Whosoever Whoever does not keep his covenant, if you don't keep your promises, never will you be a religious person or a completely religious endowed individual. La imana liman la amanata la. No religion. A person that has no complete trust, he is not trustworthy. She is not trustworthy. I'm not trustworthy. You are not trustworthy. Our community not trustworthy. And Nabi said we will never attain the highest level of faith or iman. So part of this faith is for a person to be trustworthy. As a person, I should be a trustworthy to my own self, to my own family. My family is supposed to trust me. And my children are supposed to trust me. And my parents are supposed to trust me. If I'm not trustworthy, I'm not a good believer. Believer. If I'm an imam, my community should trust me. If not, I'm not a true believer. If I'm a husband, my family is supposed to trust me. If not, I'm not a true believer. If I'm a wife, my husband is supposed to trust me. If not, I'm not a true believer. If I'm a sheikh and I have students that are in front of me, that is my obligation to teach. And I get to the classrooms and I'm busy with my phone. Or I'm not paying attention to those children or those students. I'm not trustworthy and I will be held accountable. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam recited, قول الملك جل جلاله قال الله تعالى إنا عرضنا الأمانة على السماوات والأرض والجبال فأبين أن يحملناها وأشفقن منها وحملها الإنسان إنه كان ظلوما جهولا Before I translate this verse I have a question for you my brother Before I translate this verse I have a question for you my sister Who will dare turn and decline Allah's all Will you decline the offer of the most merciful? Will you decline the offer of the entirely merciful? Will you dare deny and decline the offer of your Lord? Kalla wallah. But Almighty, when he offered a man trust to the heavens and the earth and the mountains, they all willingly and obediently decline. And they say, we can hold that trust. But human beings said, I can hold it. But most of us are not living to our words. We give words and we do not match them. We talk the talk and don't walk the walk. We go ahead saying promises that we are not keeping. So an Nabi alayhi salatu wasalam said to the companions, every Jumu'ah, Ibad Allah, la deena liman la ahda lah. عباد الله لا إيمان لمن لا أمانة له عباد الله إن كل محدثة بدعة وكل بدعة ضلالة وكل ضلالة في النار and part of being negligent of taking care of your trust and your promise is to erect a leader that is not worthy for the post that is not worthy for the place so Abdullah the prophet said to Abdurrahman ibn Samura يا Abdurrahman ibn سمرة لا تسأل الإمارة فإنك إن سألتها عن مسألة وكلت إليها وإن سألتها عن غير مسألة أو إن أعطيتها عن غير مسألة أعنت عليها يا ابن سمرة أو son of سمرة do not ask for leadership do not ask for power do not ask for any type or form or sort of leadership for if you ask for it Almighty Allah will leave you alone with it and you won't be able to take care of it but if you are given because people see you fit 
Allah will help you. And that's why our politicians, they are not up to the task because they're chasing it. They're running for it. And they are undermining one another for it. So when they take it, they're not living up to their own words. Who can change the script? A person who knows the value of a man. But you left the world for them. What will they do for us? They will only call you a terrorist, a fundamentalist. Why? Because when you speak, you are not speaking authoritatively on their level. It's just on the religious dogma that they think you are coming from. Thus, they can label us the way they want. They can deal with our brothers in Palestine the way they want. They can deal with our brothers in Yemen however they want. They can deal with our brothers in Somalia however they see fit. They can deal with us here in US however they see fit. And that's why the man of Al-Islam is upon you to take care of. So my brother in Islam, Islam is Allah's man. He has given you that man. What is man again? Amana means trust. So remember my brother, Islam is man. Iman is man. Five daily prayers are a man. Your wife to you, my brother, she is an a man. Your husband to you, my sister, he is an a man. Your son to you, my brother, is an a man. Your daughter to you, my brother and my sister, a man. The imam of the masjid, the masjid to you, a man. A doctor treating patient, they, your patients are a man. Your own society, Muslims, this a man. Your own environment, a man. All what we have around us the prophet said they are amana qiyama, and you will be asked about the amana so my brother your son is your amana don't only feed him and forget to feed his own soul don't only teach him quran and don't let him understand what is it that he or she is reciting and my young brother as a son, know that you are a man to your father. Help your father to take care of you as a man. If you don't help your father to take care of you, you are making it hard on your father to take care of you. You are putting your dad or your father or mother into jeopardy for not listening to your parents, for making it hard on them, for making it difficult on them. Do not think that you are well equipped if you act as a non-Muslim. Do not think that if you come as the new 75 cents because they have 50 cents so you are above him. Do not imitate those who have no value in their own lives for themselves, let alone for their own community. Hafiz of Al-Quran, the one whom Almighty Allah has blessed with Quran. Your Quran is amana. If you don't live up to it and you act wrongly, non-Muslims will use you as an example. Look at how he's acting. We thought he's a Muslim. Is that how you're supposed to behave? We thought you're half of Quran. Is that how a half is supposed to behave? Don't allow yourself or allow not Islam to be undermined. Allow not Islam to be insulted because of your misdemeanor, because of your mistrust, because of your evil conduct. And together, let's hold the flag of Amana to change our own situation all around the world. So everything that you do in this life that Almighty Allah has endowed you with is Al-Amana. In conclusion, I say Ibad Allah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us a sunnah as Al-Amana. So obeying Allah based on the teachings of the Prophet is Amana. Cleansing your heart for Allah is Amana. Teaching the deen to others is Amana. Wa kullu amanatin satusalu an ayawma al qiyama. Abdullah. أدى النبي الأمانة ونصح الأمة وبلغ الرسالة وجاهد في الله حق جهاده. In conclusion, I say, عباد الله. إن النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم امتثل بأوامر الله فأدى الأمانة ونصح للأمة وجاهد في الله عق جهاده. And know that no matter what you do, if it is not in accordance to the teachings of the Nabi صلى الله عليه وسلم, never will Allah answer it. And that's why Imam Shafi'i said, من استحسن فقد شرع. أي من استحسن أمرا في دين الله أو استحسن شيئا في دين الله فرآه حسنا فإنه قد جعل من نفسه مشرعا مع الله من استحسن فقد جعل من نفسه مشرعا مع الله if you worship Allah based on your own whims 
You've given yourself power to legislate or to legalize and legislation and legalization only belong to Allah. Subhanahu jalla fi ula ibad Allah akmal Allah lana al-din wa atam Allah lana al-ni'ma wa khatam lana bi sayyidi waladi Adam al-nabiy al-mustafa wal-abd al-murtada wal-nabiy al-mujtaba fabalagh risalat Rabbih wa adda amanat Rabbih وتركنا على البيضاء ليلها كنهارها لا يزيغ عنها إلا هالك قد قلت ما قلت إن صوابا فمن الله وإن عكس ذلك فمني ومن الشيطان والله ورسوله منه براء ادعوا الله يستجب لكم واعلموا أن التائب من الذنب كمن لا ذنب له